Chickens, hello, welcome to the first housework ramble of 2020. I am aware that the lighting is not what it could be if I had brought my soft light into the room, but I can't bring my soft light into the room because today I am dealing with a momentous amount of stuff and the stuff is all around me so I can access it reasonably well. And so there is actually, you know, not really much possibility of me bringing a soft light in right now because there's just stuff everywhere. I don't even know if I could reach the plug socket at the moment. Um, so basically there's a bunch of stuff that I need to sort out. Some of it is kind of like leftover Halloween decorations from the party that we had at Halloween. Believe it or not, I just chucked that stuff in a bag and got on with my life. So I need to go through that. There's clothes I need to go through, there's stationery I need to go through. There's all kinds of odds and sods that I have been putting into a small number of bags for life and just sort of leaving. Um, I've had a lot on in recent months and I really need to get to grips with my space and what is going on in these bags. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in this housework ramble. As usual with housework rambles, I invite you to join me. If there is anything that you know that you need to do, if there's anything that you've been putting off doing, if you have organizing that you need to do, if you've got washing up that you need to do, anything of that nature, I would definitely advise that you join me. Get your stuff done as well. Don't be shy, don't be a stranger, pull up a chair, get out your sewing, get out whatever it is that you know you need to be doing. Also, let us know down in the comments, what are you doing? What did you spend this housework ramble episode doing? Um, I am sipping tea today in my Matilda mug. Horrible little slugs. <laughs> Trunchbull is like, she strikes the fear of goddess into me, for real. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm drinking some cranberry ginger and rhubarb tea. Bloody gorgeous. It's my second, no, I'm lying to you, it's my third cup today. Um, but I, it's too hot to drink right now. I'll burn my fucking lip off, so I'm gonna have to wait. I've been away. I've been away from the whole YouTube thing. I have not been involving myself in any YouTube shenanigans. I have not made a video for a while now. I wouldn't say it's too terribly long, but I have had messages from people asking me if I'm okay and just sending me, you know, nice well wishes. And I really want to thank you guys for that. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate people wanting to know when I would be coming back with something to say. Um, there's a number of different reasons why I've taken a break from YouTube. Sometimes when you're on YouTube for a very long amount of time, you just go through these seasons in your YouTube life where it's not actually the most healthy place for you to be. It's not the most healthy environment. And there's a number of things that might sort of trouble you or lead you to recognize that you need a healthy break, a chance to be actually away from the environment because it can be quite full on. The whole process of putting yourself out there on the internet, making YouTube videos, talking about your stories, your life journey, your opinions about things, um, it can definitely have its darker side, it can definitely have its shadow side. And I, I'm definitely gonna be talking about that a bit more in a video fairly soon. But with this video, I wanted to focus more on mental health, emotional well-being, because one of the reasons that I've taken a break and just sort of given myself some breathing space is because I needed to for my mental health and my emotional well-being. And uh, as a lot of you will already know, I do struggle with depression. I do go through bouts of depression. I do have times where my emotional well-being is not as good as it could otherwise be were it not for my recurring mental health issues that I have. And I think it's really important to sort of, uh, to say this um, boldly and to be honest about it and just to say, yeah, this is my experience. I've always dealt with depression since I was a child. Um, it's something that I do not expect to be free of in my lifetime. It's something that, you know, comes and goes and I, and I deal with it. And I'd rather just be honest about that, I'd rather be authentic about that, I'd rather let myself be upfront about it and maybe help other people to recognise that they can be upfront about it too if they do deal with it. So in this video I'm going to be going through some stuff from these bags in front of me, trying to put them into piles that make some sort of sense and talking about my personal tips and tricks and perspectives on dealing with low moods, dealing with feeling emotionally unstable, dealing with difficult times, dealing with depression, mental health stuff. Um, you can take it or leave it. Some of it might resonate really strongly. Some of it might not. Some of it might be stuff you already do. Some of it might be stuff you never thought of doing. I'm just going to um, give it to you as it comes into my brain and see if I can get some of this stuff sorted out at the same time. I've just found one of my adult coloring books. You know what, I do a lot of my own drawing and, and I've, I make a lot of my own collage work and stuff like that, but I do sometimes just like 
a bit of adult colouring where I'm not really making anything myself, you know, I'm just sort of enjoying somebody else's design and just colouring it in. I don't know, it's just very soothing. <laughs> Maybe that should be tip number one for mental health stuff and depression and whatnot. If you're in a low mood, you could do a lot worse than an adult colouring book. I know it's not for everyone. In fact, I think this is a bit Marmite, isn't it? It's a bit of a love and hate thing. Some people love adult colouring books and some people, I think whoever doesn't love them fucking loathes them. Some people have tried them and been like, that was the most stressful, horrible experience. I felt so pressured. I couldn't stay inside the lines or I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. And I'd rather just make my own art. <laughs> and other people are like, oh, that does relieve the stress. Oh, I can feel the pressure just draining away. <laughs> so it really depends what you're into. So as I mentioned, I took a break from YouTube. Oh, lovely. <laughs> took a break from YouTube. And I sort of identified that that was something that I needed to do. I identified that something which would normally be so pleasurable for me, so fun, and so much a part of what gives me creative joy was actually uh, stressing me out, making me maybe sometimes unhappy, and that's just nothing to be worried about. Sometimes you just need to admit that it's time to take a break from something which would ordinarily give you a lot of pleasure and a lot of joy and try not to worry about it. If you recognize that that's happening and you think, oh my God, you know, this is something I've always enjoyed. It's something I really love. Why do I feel the need to back away from it? What is happening? I would always just say things come in seasons and sometimes the things that give you the most joy and the things that you're the most artistically or spiritually or socially invested in are the same things that you know, have that seasonal vibe to them where you can sometimes have too much of a good thing. And especially if it's to do with, with creative intensity, which um, obviously, you know, I make YouTube videos, I think carefully about what I want to put into them. Uh, they're not necessarily, you know, aesthetic masterpieces. That's not really the point of my videos. I personally am not in it for that. It's more about um, delivering the, the ideas and stuff. Um, you know, once in a while I might go to an adventurous aesthetic place, but it's uh, that's not where the bulk of my focus is. But I do think a lot about what I want to put into my videos and, and what, you know, the direction I want the channel to take and stuff like that. And I think it's fair to say that on some level that can have a bit of a backlash to it. And particularly if you've got a lot of other things you're dealing with, a lot of other stuff going on, you can become a little bit the way that you approach the creative process can become either a bit fixated and obsessive or a bit over overly analytical or you can become very critical of what you're doing or you know and it's good to just take a break do not think that that means you're going to be taking a break permanently if you sense that you need to take a break from your writing your dancing your art making your music making and it's freaking you out please don't worry about it i think um, taking a break can help you to really come back stronger. Oh, forgot about this. This is my new Halloween light that I got for our Halloween party that we had this year. That was a that was a jolly good time. <laughs> Haunted hairspray. <laughs> uh, okay, that goes in the Halloween box. Why is there Halloween stuff in my festival bag? This is festival stuff. As you can tell from the sheer amount of insect repellent in it. <laughs> whenever I'm dealing with mental health issues, whenever my depression crops up or I'm just feeling as though I'm not sure whether or not it's a wave of depression, but I'm definitely feeling off, I'm definitely feeling unhappy, I'm definitely feeling wobbly, I tend to have this habit of looking at uh, minor inconveniences, random things that go wrong, and taking it as almost a really personal slight against me. And I always predict that more things are gonna go wrong. It's like, I am assuming that I'm a magnet and shit is just sticking to me. Bad stuff is sticking to me. So, you know, if I have a technical issue, then suddenly um, it's the end of the world. I get very over the top about it and I start wondering what else is gonna go wrong. And I feel very annoyed just at the cosmos for screwing me over in this way and I'm just sort of expecting more and more bad things to come I would always say don't exaggerate minor inconveniences try to maintain a sense of perspective and whenever you have that feeling that the universe is against you or others are against you or you know you're constantly fighting this uphill battle and nothing is going right just try to recognize where that might be coming from a place of of overly exaggerating it amplifying it 
feeling like it's much more difficult to deal with it than it would normally be. I know that for me, when I'm going through um, a bout of depression, and I know a lot of people here are not gonna be struggling with depression, but they're gonna be watching this video for tips on how to just deal with low moods or upset. Um, when I'm going through anything like that, I do lose perspective. I do lose perspective. But the great thing about it is that I can acknowledge that the perspective has been lost, essentially. And that, you know, it gives me an opportunity to take a time out and, and just be like, okay, I know I've lost perspective here. Um, I can see that in an ordinary situation where I, f you know, might feel like I've got uh, more strength and um, more of a sort of elevated mood. I would not be taking this situation to this dark place that I'm taking it to. And that's where you you just recognize that you're going through a struggle that's making you take things out of context or out, or, you know, blow things out of proportion always try to recognize when you're telling yourself that there's a cosmic vendetta against you and um you know you're feeling very resentful of that or even very fearful of that because you're like what the fuck is going on why are so many things going wrong i think that when i've looked when i've looked back over a few days that i've had in the last couple of months particularly there have been things that have just gone wrong one after another it's like a domino effect but actually when i look at it in the context of an ordinary day where a few unfortunate events have happened i would have been able to handle it fine had it not been for the fact that i was already dealing with mental health issues my well-being was already feeling very compromised i was already feeling very shaky um, and that just made everything feel so much bigger than it was and i exaggerated it and i also kind of got a persecution complex about it i felt like a victim and i think that is a very classic sign for me of depression and even if you you don't necessarily deal with depression but you deal with difficult moods you find it difficult just to shoulder the burden of human consciousness which is fair enough to be honest it's a pretty difficult thing to shoulder um you know you might recognize again you might recognize in yourself that tendency to um, think of yourself as being persecuted or being followed around by these unfortunate events and you know it is possible to to get things out of proportion and tell yourself something's happening that isn't really happening you know uh, stationary stationary Put these things behind me i think you have to take a deep breath sometimes you have to reason with yourself you have to recognize that you've gone into that way of thinking and gently compassionately just confirm that for yourself and it should bring you back to sort of a, a bit of a reset state where you stop amplifying or exaggerating things you stop convincing yourself that shit is sticking to you um because that's obviously you know that is a depressed way of of looking at things and that is a really pessimistic way of looking at things and often it's not got that all that much to do with the truth like some days are just more of a shit sandwich than others and it doesn't necessarily have to mean anything beyond that one thing that i have been doing for several years now is kind of formulating an ongoing list in my head of the unhelpful triggers the unhelpful influences the things that i know are uh, not necessarily gonna give me joy or help me to progress when i'm going through depression or when i'm in a low mood and they might be things that i temporarily find quite pleasurable um, but ultimately in the long run they tend to always make me feel crappy one of the things that I can give you as an example just from my own experience is finding myself getting stuck um, sort of just watching endless YouTube videos on a specific subject that is not necessarily very intellectually stimulating but there's something sort of comforting about it um, there's sort of like an empty consolation to it sort of thing that's something that I can recognize that I do and it's something that I can recognize tends to have an unhealthy or unfortunate effect on me afterwards. So temporary thrill, like long term, not so great. And I know that for a lot of people, a similar sort of thing happens with comfort eating, where there might be specific foods that you get into to give yourself a temporary lift, knowing that later on the difficulties that you're going through with your emotional well-being with your mental state are still going to be there but alongside those feelings you've also piled this other issue on top where you feel like crappy from the crash from the sugar rush from earlier or you just feel like unhappy with the fact that you didn't uh, eat in a self-caring self-loving way right so I think that and there's loads of different ways that people can find themselves being attracted to things that might provide that temporary sense of a lift but ultimately tend to add to the problem. Ooh, I found my pink heart ring. Lovely. Ooh.
<laughs> let me take it off it doesn't go with this outfit damn it um yeah so i think one of the things that's been helpful for me is just knowing what that list is what is on that list and um that's sort of a, a self-awareness thing if i can maintain any grip on the self-awareness required to know when i'm moving towards an unhealthy influence or something that i know is later just going to add to the problem then that's a good thing it's not a perfect science um but it's something that i think has gotten better for me over the course of time sometimes a physical list is the best thing to do in this case just sit down and write a list of the things that you know that you uh, have a tendency to do to try to comfort yourself or to escape from the problems that you're having or to feel better on some basis that you know in the end uh, is undeniably temporary and it's something that you've witnessed as being true over the course of time so you've got sort of like the evidence that you do pursue those things but they don't ever really turn out to be so great in the end you know um and i think if you can have some awareness of that some sort of running list of what those things are that can be useful just in terms of identifying that you are moving towards those things and even if you are in the midst of um a binge eating session or um you know a sort of low vibe um sort of youtube binging session or you're having a few too many glasses of wine and you know that's something you do or you're engaging in bitchiness and gossip and blah blah, blah. you know that's something you do whatever it is that you do that you know is on your list of like unhelpful influences or unhelpful actions even if you're doing them and you're in the midst of them at least you know that there's going to be fallout that you can expect and you can be like oh i've engaged in this thing I know how I'm going to feel after doing this thing. I know that it's not necessarily helpful and I'm prepared to lovingly sort of hold myself as I go through whatever the fallout from this is going to be. I also have, of course, a running list in my head of the things that work, the things that I know can help me to get out of a funk, can help me to deal better with depression if indeed, you know, I've recognised that it is a depressive episode. I have a list of the things that I know um, make me feel more strong, more positive, um, a list of the things that lift me out of fear and hopelessness and my responsibility to myself is to access that list it is to acknowledge that that list exists and to actually use it and what I would say to anybody watching this looking for tips or advice is that your your commitment to yourself has to be the same you have to have that knowledge of things that have worked in the past things that you know that you may put off even though they are really good for you and your responsibility in that case is to actually do those things that you put off. Acknowledge that those are the things that are going to make a difference and actually do them. One thing that I can say with great certainty is usually very helpful for me on some level, and the level is going to vary, but, you know, undoubtedly it's always helpful to some degree, is physical activity. And... I have recently, and this is a very recent thing, so I really want to share this because it's been really helpful for me. I have recently switched from calling it exercise or working out to physical activity. And I'll tell you for why, right? I must admit that I think I was just putting too much emphasis on workout workouts, you know what I mean? So instead of putting emphasis on getting the heart pumping, moving my body, feeling like I'm in my physical body, creating an endorphin release through physical kinetic movement, instead of focusing on that and how that's really the thing that can help me with my depression, I was instead focusing too overtly on workouts, you know, really working up a sweat, pushing myself physically and um, sort of like beating my records in certain regards so i'd be val like i would value going to the gym and weightlifting going to the gym and doing cardio um doing compound moves on the mat at home but doing like an actual workout routine that i'd found on the internet or using an app or whatever and um if i didn't feel up to that which as anybody who's had a depressive episode will understand sometimes you do not feel up to even getting out of bed it's like oh my god i couldn't possibly imagine going to the gym and smashing out an hour at the gym i wouldn't see any value in any you know it would be a day where i had really no physical activity because i had neglected to see the value in um any kind of other physical activity so now instead of saying to myself i need to exercise because it's good for me when i have depression i need to work out because it's good for my mental health i've switched to saying i need physical activity physical activity is good for me 
physical activity helps because physical activity doesn't just have to be smashing out a hardcore workout it doesn't have to be doing something very ambitious very adventurous very sweat inducing physical activity can literally if need be just be a simple case of going for a walk around the block uh doing a few stretches you know um just sort of moving around the flat a little bit maybe having a little bit of a dance you know just putting some music on and dancing around for a bit so it's a lot less intimidating and it reminds me that it's not always about challenging myself and pushing myself to the next level and you know ambition 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 it doesn't have to be about that it can simply be about making sure that i'm moving around i'm in my body i'm raising my heart rate a little bit um, and that's really helped me. So I don't know how many people this will be helpful for, but if you are a person that does connect exercise and working out with an improvement in your mental health and your emotional well-being, might I suggest you switch from thinking about exercise as being the thing you should be doing to thinking about just any physical activity? Because if you can't handle a workout, you can handle some kind of low-level physical activity. And that's really the beautiful thing about switching up your wording is that you realise, oh, wow, my whole perspective is different now. I was actually putting way too much value on pushing myself to the limit. It is amazing to recognise that that doesn't necessarily always have to be the case and that you can um, just relax and come from the place that you're at, you know, and, and let yourself um, really just be where you are in that moment without feeling like, oh, I've got to go on this absolute rampage to uh, push myself to the limit or break my record on the cross trainer or, you know, do this really intense yoga workout. It doesn't have to be like that. You can just, you know, march around your flat, do some lunges. I don't know, whatever you're physically capable of doing that you feel will up your heart rate a little bit. Um, you know, I think I was really starting to undervalue how much walking does me good because... I started to get myself into this headspace where I was annoyed with myself for not going to the gym, not feeling up to working out in in that way. So I was undervaluing the simple majesty and importance of just like walking around the block, you know, just going for a walk around the street for a couple of minutes and coming back. So I have decided that from now on, it's physical activity that I need to make sure I pursue. And I can pursue that in a number of different ways. It doesn't have to be in this very ambitious way. Another thing that I wanted to mention about the body and the physical stuff is that it can be very helpful when you're dealing with low moods and depression and stuff like that to do body awareness exercises and body scan meditations. Uh, this really helps you, especially with recognizing where you hold tension in the body and then sending your intention your compassion, your love, your focus, your awareness to those areas of the body where you hold that tension. That's very helpful for me. Um, and I know, you know, some of you are aware, some of you are not, that I do have a, a spinal injury. Well, I've got a, a herniation in my um, L4 at the bottom of my spine, right by my bum. And uh, sometimes that can play up. Sometimes uh, I do hold a lot of tension in my neck and shoulders that has sort of like a knock on effect in other areas of my body and it is not helpful for my back injury so it's definitely useful for me to do body scans and also sometimes you just feel very disconnected from the world and from the situation around you and I know this is something I want to get to in this video as well in this housework ramble um, I know that for me one of the big things that stresses me out sometimes is that there's so much shit going on that I cannot single-handedly change. And I hold a lot of that. I hold a lot of that emotionally. I hold a lot of that bodily. It troubles me. It stresses me out. I think about it and it stresses me out. Um, but I know that action releases tension. So for me, if something's bothering me, whether it's, you know, the situation with the fire in Australia, the situation with homelessness in my community, the situation with suicide, this, you know, whatever it is, if something's bothering me and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know, this is something that is really troubling, I know that taking some sort of action to help on any level will release the tension and it is the right thing to do. Hang on, I've kind of gone off on a bit of a tangent now. So what I was saying initially was, yes, yeah, scan the body, feel where you hold tension in the body, release tension in the body, send love and focus and peace 
to those areas of the body where you're holding that tension and also understand that the tension that you're holding in the body could very much be linked to things that you cannot single-handedly change on your own or affect or reverse on your own but what you can do to further release tension and to further feel connected to yourself and the world and your body is to just take some sort of inspired action uh, however seemingly small to align yourself with uh, the things that you want to see more of in the world and um, you know when you do that you are living authentically you are living in your truth and that also has a very therapeutic and a very powerful effect on your mental health and emotional well-being because I know that for me when I don't feel like I've done anything um, to aid anything when I don't feel like I've done anything for anyone when I don't feel like I've been in any kind of service at all for quite a while that just bothers me more you know that's not something that necessarily allows me to care for myself more and focus on myself more it's like it troubles me on some level I'm not saying I'm telling myself I need to go out and single-handedly change the world that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the opposite of that. I'm saying that you shouldn't tell yourself there's no inspired action that you can take. You can take meaningful action on some level in some way, you know? And the example that I always give is if you're troubled by poverty, if you're troubled by homelessness, go and give some stuff to the food bank. When you do your shopping, pick up a few tins of soup and a pack of tea bags and put it in at your local food bank, put it in at your local donation center, find out where they are taking donations and delivering to the delivering them to the homeless, to the volatilely housed, um, to needy families and, you know, do that. That is inspired action that you can take today that I guarantee you will release tension physically and psycho-spiritually because you know that you have ceased for that moment in time to be an unquestioning cog in a broken machine and you have decided to do something to try to actually help on some human level that you know is going to have some effect. Oh my goddess, I've already gone through an entire bag. And I've got a few things that belong in the bedroom, so I've put them in a bag. I've got a bit of stationery that needs to be filed away in the box behind me. Um, and I've also found a couple of things that I had been looking for, including the other one of these black hoop earrings that's been really annoying me. And this ring, which reminds me of the ring that Patricia Arquette wears in the film Stigmata. And I always wanted one like it. And I found this in a charity shop a few months ago. And I was like, oh my God, it's like the one she wears in Stigmata. Ah! And uh, I, I lost it. So I'm very happy also to find this, this little gem. Also, I think when it comes to physical stuff as well, just be honest with yourself about stuff like hydration, sleep pattern, food, what you're actually ingesting. It's never going to be a perfect score when your emotional stability has been compromised by loss, heartbreak or mental health issues. It's never going to be a perfect score. You should not be trying to keep yourself to that perfect score because it's not going to happen. When things are a bit of a shambles in terms of your sense of, of well-being and your mental state, like I said, it can be a time when you do feel very disconnected from your body and so obvious things become very abstract to you like you wonder why you're feeling like shit but at the same time if you really break it down you have just eaten a massive bag of Doritos and not drunk any water all day or whatever you wonder why you feel like shit but at the same time you've been awake watching films all night and you know you haven't eaten anything maybe you, you don't remember the last time you ate it's just things like that where you have to sort of it's like a mindfulness spell you have to keep bringing yourself back to the body and sort of recognizing, okay, this is not just some insignificant little meat suit that I'm using to propel me through this experience. This is part of the experience. And when I don't factor that in, it's going to be harder for me to deal with whatever I've got on my plate emotionally and mentally because the body is under stress and the body is not getting what it needs and therefore the mind is not getting what it needs and it's all very symbiotic. I know it sounds really fucking obvious and I know that this is stuff I've talked about in videos before, but I just feel like sometimes these things can stand to be repeated because I know that for me, whenever I go through difficulties with my mental health, these things come back to haunt me again and again. Do I get a bit better each time at dealing with these things? Yeah, I would say I do. I would say that there is definitely that aspect to it where um, I am I am better at, at being I am better at being depressed. I'm better at like seeing it coming. I'm better at knowing what I need to do in terms of laying strong foundations to get me through it adequately. I'm better at knowing how to continue working, um, you know, with it. Uh, and, I, and I'm not saying that's always the right uh, uh, itchy nose. I'm not saying that's always the right thing for everybody, but I'm better at these things. Undeniably, yes. 
Um, but at the same time, like it can hit you like a train sometimes and you do need to go through the basics again in your mind. So I guess that's why I'm delivering the basics to anyone who should chance to need them at this moment in time. I mean, of course I do go through times undoubtedly where I tell myself, you know, this means nothing in the grand scheme of things. And it, that can actually be, you know, a useful way of looking at things. But have I used that point of view to beat myself up, cut myself down, tell myself that my problems are what, you know, mean nothing and I mean nothing. And yeah, definitely I've used it that way. And it's, it's, it's undeniable when I look over the timeline of my life that I am more helpful to other people and I'm more effectual in the world and I can be of greater service when I'm being of service to myself. When I'm not dealing with my issues, then I'm sure as shit not dealing with anybody else's issues or anything else or any other issues on the planet either, believe me, okay? It's far better if I want to actually do something about the stuff that I really think matters that I actually you know work on doing something with the stuff that's a problem for me personally everything's linked it's linked together oh me halloween lights oh it's all over i'm so sad <laughs> come back halloween for fuck's sake oh the silly string all over everything <laughs> let me sort that out i've just found a piece of paper that says what has been hidden and can now be seen cryptic i mean it's not that cryptic because i can see from the motif on it that it is from the paper that i keep in my altar drawer so i think that i intended for it to be part of my positions for a room reading i was doing um no idea how it ended up here in a random bag full of halloween stuff but you know how does anything happen i suppose in the witchy realm I don't think it has to be one or the other either. I don't think it has to be that you feel gratitude for the things you have, you feel gratitude for the little things during the day that have uplifted you, or everything's shit, nothing matters, you're really upset about everything, life is terrible. It can be both of those things, can't it? You can acknowledge the challenges that you're going through and also acknowledge what you're grateful for and allow that to uplift you um, in the interim periods between the shit show that you're experiencing, the shit sandwiches that you're constantly having to eat. I also think a lot of people that are afraid of facing their issues, let's face it, have um, an obnoxious and kind of arrogant way of implying or outright explicitly stating that people who are trying to deal with their mental health issues or are admitting that they have problems are self-indulgent and don't do anything for anyone else and that's just propaganda that is a way for people I think in a lot of cases it's a way for people who don't want to focus on their own issues and admit they've got shit to, to shame other people for doing that work you know because it pokes someone in the shadow I think sometimes to see somebody doing that self-development work when they know they might need to do it themselves it's much easier to shame them and then also somehow pick up some social points and social currency for looking like the person who cares more about the bigger picture than they do about their own issues. So I would say don't let somebody shame you out of dealing with your shit by trying to convince uh, you and others that by dealing with your shit, you're self-indulgent, you don't care about anything else, you don't do anything else. There's plenty of people that do incredibly important, profound work in the world, um, you know, in, in many different arenas and still you know find time to go to their weekly therapist appointment or you know still need to open up to their friend or loved one about what they're going through they still cry they still um have to to deal with stuff going on in their own mind so it's preposterous this idea that you're either caring about the bigger picture you're either caring about the collective you're doing something for someone or something else or you're caring about yourself, you're indulgent, you're selfish, you're self-oriented. Um, you know, no, we can we can acknowledge we have work to do and also do work on behalf of others. I love the fact that my pendulum has ended up in the Halloween bag and it's sort of like clogged up with these glow-in-the-dark spiders from the party. When you open up to someone about what you're going through and you ask them to support you or hold space for you or just sort of empathize or acknowledge where you're coming from that's a privilege that you've given to that person it's not a right that they have they do not have a right to know the lay of the land in your mental state if they reply with something like toughen up or turn to jesus then maybe they have given you a sign that they are um, not worthy of of that privilege that you have given to them maybe um you need to find somebody else to hold some space for you if you are mocked, um, if you are treated with derision, 
for opening up about what is going on with you then again you know that that person isn't the person to have opened up to and please don't allow yourself to feel shamed by their response when you're looking to somebody for sort of a listening ear or some advice um, you might have to kiss a few frogs before you find your prince and sometimes a person might admit to you that they feel like they're a little bit out of their depth with what you're talking to them about um, you know sometimes as well a person might be good for talking about one thing but not necessarily so great when addressing a different thing so sometimes you've got to be prepared to acknowledge that you know it's not always um, the same person that you can go to for everything and I think, you know, nor should it be. I definitely think there's a possibility of overloading a specific person with too much of what's going on with us at times. Um, you know, it is nice to have that reassurance from somebody that they are there for you through something and they know that you're going through a hard time. But at the same time, and this is maybe a bit of a tough loving message that I'm giving here, but only ultimately you can decide what the next action needs to be and only you can be ultimately responsible for moving things in the direction that they need to move in um, you can give that person who's supporting you updates about what you're doing and you know where the journey is going and check in with them and enjoy that feeling of knowing that they are there for you but ultimately you do have to be there for yourself they cannot carry you to the finish line in any regard they cannot force you to get help and to seek support um, and they, they you know, very, very unlikely can't be there for you every minute of every day. Throw out more than one lifeline. That's something that I will say. There's nothing wrong with approaching different people and seeing who can be there for you for something that you might need some support for, who can talk to you. Um, if you've got the ability to throw out multiple lifelines, do so. Please do not be ashamed in any way of any need that you might have to use helplines. Helplines can be life-saving. Helplines can be be so significantly positive at so many different times in your life whether you're dealing with something specific that's befallen you or whether you're handling ongoing mental health issues that have an effect on you on a regular basis sometimes it can be really freeing and necessary to say what you need to say to someone who's never had contact with you before um, somebody who's just going to let you vent I know that the Samaritans helpline in the UK is really uh, good for that it's good for just space holding and non-judgmental unbiased space holding sometimes there are things that we want to get off of our chest that we feel would be way too high risk to say to a friend sometimes we feel like we're going to be taken the wrong way uh, when actually we might just want to kind of go through something in our heads and um, think about what the actions need to be and in the midst of doing that we might need to conversate about some stuff or just say some stuff out loud that is quite alarmist and scary and we don't know necessarily how our loved ones would take it but we feel like we need to say it to someone that's a really good time to recognize the power and the value of helplines i'm sure that there must be a decent comprehensive directory of helplines in different countries on the internet i'm going to try and find something like that and leave it down below as if i've emptied another fucking bag i am so happy about that but this one, unfortunately, does need to be sewn up. There is a tiny hole in the bottom. So that is another job for me for another day. I love this bag because it says wild at heart. And that's the same thing it says on my tattoo. And it's the same thing I am, wild at heart. I can feel my Virgo moon being like, you're not wild at heart. You're wild at heart if you can organise that wildness into very distinct categories in your fire facts. Look at this cute little box I got in a charity shop. It's got a donut on the front. <laughs> I love it, little princess house. With all this talk of reaching out, it might be a good time to also mention that you might have a fairly strong instinct that you want to pull back from communication. You want to pull back from activities, you want to pull back from responsibility, you want to pull back from making sure that you're up to date with your WhatsApp threads and you know checking in with people. I think we need to give ourselves permission sometimes to recognise that we cannot continue on with communication and investing ourselves in certain forms of communication like social interaction and stuff like that or family obligations whilst at the same time doing what we've got to do for ourselves it's a self-preservation thing is everybody going to like it all of the time no absolutely not are certain people going to take it personally yeah probably sometimes along the way do you have to place a certain amount of trust in people and hope that they actually get where you're coming from that they understand your point of view 
yeah, you're going to have to just trust and hope and uh, not give yourself a hard time if sometimes somebody doesn't get it and they do want you to be more present in a way that you simply cannot be because the situation you know calls for you to acknowledge that that isn't possible for you mentally there are some things that we can't just duck out of there are some conversations we need to have some events we need to attend some things we need to do that we can't duck out of for one reason or another and you know for that reason anything that is genuinely superfluous or genuinely can wait or genuinely no one is going to die and no one is going to go into massive debt if this thing doesn't get done you should absolutely allow yourself not to do it i mean that's how it's got to work isn't it for everything that you feel like you have to do like you have to get up and feed your young child you have to do the school run for example these things for everything like that that you feel like is very high stakes if you don't do it and you would like to pull out of the bag the energy and the determination to be able to do it then something else needs to be cut back on or put on the back burner or you know the pause button needs to be pressed in some other way you cannot afford to tell yourself that all the plates have got to keep spinning you can't afford to tell yourself that you're not allowed to tell yourself that i demand that you stop telling yourself that sometimes you need to prioritize you need to rearrange and people have just got to get it they've just got to get it or maybe they won't get it but you've still got to get the fact that you need to do that for yourself i have had a couple of situations in my life and i'm not saying this is necessarily going to be what happens in your case but i've had a couple of situations in my life where friends have come to me loved ones have come to me to talk about something that's going on with their mental health and their emotional well-being uh, something has gone wrong, they're experiencing a mental health issue for the first time, something has cropped up that they're really struggling with, they come to me and they say, I finally actually get it. And I was very judgmental in the past of you or of others. I did, you know, tell myself certain things about the reality of your situation, but I now see it from the other side and I'm sorry. And I'm really actually taking that on board, you know. There are times people have said that. And it is very powerful. So sometimes you've just got to accept that if somebody doesn't get where you're coming from with needing to pull back or needing to make temporary changes for the good of your health, that they have been fortunate enough, potentially, just not to have gone through what it is that you're experiencing. And it can actually happen to anyone at any time. And it does regularly happen in the lives of adults who've never gone through anything like it before either because of an external situation that's befallen them or you know what it's just like they're just going to become part of that statistic of adults who start experiencing issues with with uh, with mental health with with their emotional well-being um and so sometimes it's just hard for somebody to be able to appreciate where you're coming from without ever having lived anything like it and that's not to say that they won't at some point become deeply appreciative of it in the future at some time oh these old things <laughs> <laughs> do you dare me to go out and get my lunch like this <laughs> should i i'm too scared how can i be too scared come on it's just my love glasses for god's sake i feel like james st james in uh, party monster <laughs> seth green's greatest part i don't even need to know what other parts he's going to do in his lifetime that was the greatest and best he will ever do he peaked at James St. James. Everything else now is just a bonus. So basically, honey bunnies, obviously with it being the new year, a lot of you know I'm really fond of connecting with the new year energy, making the most out of the new year energy. I really did want to put out some content, but I still felt like, you know what, as much as I do have some ideas and some things that I could offer and some things that I think would be good, I need to focus on what's going on with me. I still need to be centering um, my own process and I feel like I can come back now in a, a, fuller, <clears throat> a fuller way I know I haven't been away for two years or anything for fuck's sake it's nothing dramatic but for me it was quite a long time without making anything without putting anything out to you without saying much um, so you know I'm ready to kind of uh, to come back I have found that there's been quite a lot to contend with in terms of projects that I'm working on um, some of which I, I can't go into fully now, but I will definitely explain at another time. Um, political situation in the country, stress around that, worries about what's going on um, in the wider world. Just lots of very intense news, lots of very intense developments. Um, like I said, also just kind of 
noticing that there were a lot of shadowy feelings coming up about YouTube and that, that's not something that's necessarily fully new. I've had that before. I recognise that it's sort of a, it's a carousel and you, you go round on that carousel. Sometimes you do hit a shitty bit and you have to pull back. I do think it's healthy to have breaks. I do not think you can stick at something religiously, um, you know, re churning out that creativity in a way that does then be begin to feel like so some sort of like, um, a uh, sort of obligatory labor obligatory labor something that you can't compromise on something you are not allowed to pull back from because it's just what you do and uh i don't want to put myself into a situation where i feel that way about what i'm producing so um you know i, I think that for all of those reasons you haven't seen as much of me as perhaps you might have otherwise have done but um I really still love contributing to this channel and I still love getting your perspectives on things and understanding where you're coming from. I'm definitely going to make a video talking a bit more just for, I guess, my own um, sort of amusement, really, about some of the things about the YouTube experience that aren't so pleasant and um, that perplex me or do tend to be more stressful components if I'm already dealing with stress you know if there's already issues there then um, they might be the components that sort of exacerbate the already existing issues I want to give people a taste of some of the ridiculous comments that I receive um, and some of the uh, ridiculous assumptions that are made about me and just talk about that in more of a, a light-hearted way as well and just sort of address those things um, from the perspective of somebody who actually lives it and has lived it for quite a long time now um so yeah i think that might be an interesting video let me know if you would be uh, interested in hearing more about that and if not you know what don't watch obviously if that's not if, that, if it's not your cup of tea no one is holding a gun to your head darlings um but yeah i think for me that would be something interesting to kind of delve into as well and and share with you guys um so I have nearly gone through all of the bags now. I've got one and a half left to do. I think I've said everything that I pretty much wanted to say. And I think that I've made some progress, which uh, I'm pretty happy with. So I'm going to say goodbye for now, darlings, and let you guys go on your merry way. Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to 2020. And I'm going to be sharing so much with you guys this year. I've got deck unboxings to do. I've got tea and tarot episodes to do. I'm going to be sharing some of my my physical activity journey I was going to say fitness or workout journey but no physical activity that mindset shift darlings okay I'm practicing what I preach <laughs> much love honey bunnies thank you for joining me for this housework ramble I hope that a lot of you got your housework done as well as you sat here and um, journeyed along with me and if you have any other tips or any other perspectives on how to deal with low moods how to deal with depression um, anything like that anything that, that works for you or that you feel is important to state in the comments please go ahead and do so and there are lots of other videos on the channel about mental health and depression please just use the search bar in the top right hand corner of the main page tap in any search words that you want to find videos on and you will uh, probably find something from me at this point i think there's like 550 videos on here at this point so knock yourselves out not literally but proverbially okay much love till next time baby cakes Mwah. blessed be Oh my goddess, I've been looking for the other one of these for a million years. Hello. Where have you been? Well, you've been in here, obviously. <laughs>